so good to see all of you. We started selling tickets 10 days ago, thinking that we are going to be in the aircon room. And uh, 100 tables, I was thinking in, the chat, in our chat group, I think, I said, hey, two weeks uh, can sell or not? But you guys have proved that you will support change and continue to support change with these 300 tables. Be very insincere if I tell you GE14 is going to be an easy battle for us. Let me just give you an example. Why do we think that GE14 will be a difficult battle? The first one, of course, is gerrymandering. Everyone knows my constituency has 50,000 voters. Some of you are my voters. I hope you continue to vote for me next round. And Putrajaya have 15,000 a member of parliament seats. Everyone knows of gerrymandering. But many people do not know that the next kingmaker for general election will be the youth. Will be those who will come first time voting. According to the census 2010, the 15 years old to 20 years old is 2.8 million people. The 20 years old to 25 is about 2.5. And then you have 25 to 30 years old is about 2.3. So if we add up all together, they are now 21 years old and 30 to 35 years old. Add up all together, we have 7 million people. Last general election, we have 13 million voters. If today the youth is going to register and vote, the youth is going to decide who will be the government, next government of Malaysia. But look around here. Look around this room. There are not many youth. I, many are youth at heart. I'm so sorry, I lost some votes already by saying that. Many are youth at heart. But they are, it is a very apparent truth that our youth are not participating enough. And therefore, some of your fund that is going to come to my, our branch is going to use for youth political work. We need to make the youth mobilize. We need to make them stand up for the rights of the people. We need to make them to register their friends to vote. We need to make them to go to vote. We need to make them to become the kingmaker. If today you still do not believe in the power of youth, if today you still think that the decision is made by people at the high places, today I want to tell you that there is 7 million folks that can vote out Barisa National. 7 million of them. But I have bad news for you. Out of these 7 million, only about half is registered. That means only 3 million are eligible to vote. That is why we need to mobilize a lot of people to start doing our registration to voter registration campaign. That is why we need your fund. Your fund will be used for youth work, youth registration work, youth activism work, and youth empowerment work. And next round, I hope our leaders will bring in more young leaders 
to be a state representative and member of parliament. Do you agree with me? Uh? <laughs> so this is a hint to Tony Poa because Tony Poa is no longer young. Oh, next round I may not get the candidacy because of saying that, yeah? Tony Poa is no longer young. We need also young people that represent the voice. This is the biggest demography of our country, but we do not have enough voice for them. They will, the youth will become, will, will have 67.8%, will be a part of 67.8% of our workforce in 2020. But how much we have done for them, and how much have we voiced out for them, and how much have we empowered them, how much have we trained them? How much, as a political leader, policy makers, that we think of youth policy as a whole? So I hope that we will continue to support youth. Um, because of people in Pataling Jaya, me as a young leader, three years ago, managed to stand for election, and you voted for us. I hope that in the future, we will have more young leaders to come, and we will provide a paradigm shift in this politics, one a new politics where people are accountable to you, to you as a voters, to you as a person of Malaysia. We want people to resign if they misuse public fund. We want them to step down if they are involved in scandal. We want them to know what is malu malu, so that they will be able to be accountable to you. So this is a new policy. You see the tickets, yeah. If you look at the tickets, you will see all are males and only I am a, I am a woman. Well, I have a clap for that. Thank you so much because I have ladies' friends that are supporting me. <clears throat> we do not only devoid of the voice of the youth, but also I think in politics we are devoid of the voice for the women. But as I checked the tables yesterday on all the tables, you know what I found? I found most of the tables are booked by women. So for those of you who booked the table, thank you very much. <laughs> women can make a change. Women will be able to make a change in the political process. We need more women in this country to be a political leader because we need to say out the issue of women. For example, rape cases. There are 3,000 rape cases in reported in Malaysia every year. However, 2 out of 10 is not, is not reported. That means we have about 15,000 rape cases every year in Malaysia. That means every 35 minutes, one woman, one woman is rape issues are not brought up prominently most of the time. Uh, we have affordable childcare policies, we have workplace childcare, we have so many other policies related to women that because there is a devoid of women's voice in the policy making, we are lagged behind. So I hope that uh, next time, not only you will support young leaders, you will also support women leaders. Is it okay? Before I go, I just want to recognize for those of you who are here today, you might think that this thing is organized by uh, our members and everything. I, today, I just want to show you what is youth power. Most of the people who are volunteers today are young people who are there. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> More young people to come forward and do nation building. We do not want to continue the old politics, we want young, more young people to take ownership. Another front line that DAP is doing with your money, some, some of your money will be into this, is that we do not want to be a China party. We do not want to be a party only for the Chinese, no. We want to be a party regardless of what is the colour of your skin, we will protect you, we will protect your right, we will protect democracy, we will protect social and economic justice.
That is the party we want to be. We want to be a party for all Malaysians. Today, DAP image is tarnished among the Malay crowds. Among the Malay, they think that we are anti-Malay, anti-Islam. No, we are just anti-corruption. So, a lot of your money will be used to open this frontier. To open a new frontier for people that is non-conventional to the DAP. Because DAP is not contented with just being a, an urban party. We want to be an urban party, semi-rural party, and a rural party that speaks for all Malaysians. So today, I would like to introduce you a young woman who is from a non-conventional ground. Can I invite Rara to come on stage? I just want to introduce you her. She is the pioneer of a new politics. She is not our tool. She is not used by us. This one you want to be, I want to assure you. She believes in the thing that we believe in. The only thing that we agree is that we agree with the social democratic country. We agree that the country should be clean. We agree that people should be treated equally. And it is not easy for her. The last time I did a buka puasa with her uh, in Shah Alam, people put her face and the banner say she pengkhianat. Maybe she is definitely a pengkhianat. I'm not. But she is not a pengkhianat for Malaysians. She is so bold to join us because she believes in our ideology. We need young women and we need a non-conventional ground. We need to start to do the things that we have never done before. If you believe in change, we need a radical change. Therefore, this is the first step and I believe people of Petaling Jaya will be like, you support Impian Sarawak, continue to support our new efforts, new frontier, new flags to a better ground, and we will win the election. So with that, I would like to pass the floor to Rara to speak a few words.